So we have one more question for our candidates today, and it was something that Mr. Denshi touched on. It was mentioned in the introduction today that I've been covering politics most of my time in journalism. And if I was ever given the choice of covering a provincial or a federal story or a municipal story, I always chose federal or provincial, and here's the reason why. It is brought into crystal clarity on this topic. There are a lot of people in this city who say, yes, we need affordable housing, but that list of people shrinks as soon as you say, we're going to put it in your neighborhood. You have one minute. Mr. Stewart, what would you do to overcome NIMBYism as associated with affordable housing? Well, I would start. I, I worked uh, in public affairs for Shell for years, and I did the public work when Shell built the Caroline, Caroline gas plant. One of the things we've got to learn is that the time to consult is not when you've got your plans laid and you just don't provide information. We've got to get at it early before we start plans to implement something in a neighborhood. And I think the people of Calgary are all people of goodwill and will respond positively to that kind of approach. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Mr. Nancy. Two things. Number one is making feel people feel like they're not taking the burden on themselves. That we're legitimately sharing this across the city. That's where the inclusionary zoning, putting affordable housing into every project comes in. That's important because if people feel like they're being singled out, that's where you get these feelings. Number two, though, you gotta have guts. You gotta have guts. Alderman Connolly had guts when he went to Spring Bank Hill and talked to them about the summits in Montreal. But all too often, you know, two gentlemen at this table have voted against every single secondary suite proposal that has come to City Council. You gotta have the guts. That's what Edmonton City Council did when they legalized affordable housing throughout the city and held themselves up and waited for all the complaints. My friend Don Ives, the city councillor, told me that the year after they legalized uh, secondary suites throughout their city, he received not one single complaint in his office. So you've got to show the leadership. Once you show the leadership, that's how you counteract the ideas. If you cave to every single one, you're never going to be able to move forward. So inclusionary zoning, you've got to have guts. Thank you, Mr. Nancy. Mr. McIver. Well, my colleague who was referring to me is wrong. I, uh, if, uh, I certainly have supported uh, uh, some secondary suite uh, proposals. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, it is about communication as we heard. My proposal that was criticized by my colleague was to actually take time to talk to people before we, we put that secondary suite policy into place because we don't want to be at war with communities. We want them to welcome them in. And just, you know, I have already done some of this work. Uh, Tim would know I worked with Martina Jelikova from his board at Acadia when there was, they bought a, a unit and we turned a meeting around from wanting them nowhere near that community to now they're kind of protective of it. I, I think that was uh, one of the very few and maybe the only one that, uh, that voted for a, uh, adding housing a couple blocks from where I live. I'm walking the walk. I'll continue to walk the walk as mayor and I will continue to encourage other people to do that because that's how we're going to get something done. It's about results. I've been providing them. I've been working, uh, as I say, chairing the housing company, working for seniors housing. One of the best predictors of future performance is past performance. Since I've already been working on this important issue, I think you can comfortably expect me to continue to. Thank you, Mr. McIver. Mr. Wolver. Well, thank you. Obviously, when I started uh, down the road of trying to legalize secondary suites in the 1990s, I was a parade of one on council. And so I obviously absorbed a great deal of criticism and abuse and phone calls to City Hall whenever I went on the radio or anywhere else and said this was a good idea. So I learned a lot about how to deal with this issue and when I became an MLA with the province and I asked for and got the MLA committee to address the building code issue so we could legalize basement suites we traveled the whole province and we talked to town councils and citizens everywhere. And I particularly remember in South Calgary Community Association at a town hall meeting there, um, by the end of the evening when we explained what we were trying to do and what we hoped to do and why, why we needed this and why we needed it desperately, at the end of the night I took a vote. It was unanimously in support. When did you ever have a town hall meeting where the entire audience was unanimously in support? I'm very proud of my experience at working with NIMBY. I have, I have approached NIMBY on a number of fronts. I approached numerous church leaders in this city to talk about NIMBY and whether or not they would address it in sermons as to why it was wrong. I talked to people about why all the issues and concerns they had about basement suites 
would probably largely be resolved or mitigated if we could legalize them. Thank you, Mr. Ward.